Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to an episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Blog. I'm here in my car. I'm about to leave. I'm going to go pick up comic books today. We have two Venom comics coming out. We have uh, Venomized number four. So we're nearing the end of this five issue series. Uh, next week, we will try to squeeze in the fifth episode before episode 150 uh, to end out season one. And we'll do a review of that. Uh, prob maybe even on the last episode. I don't even know yet. Uh, but then um, also, we have uh, the Nativity part two. So the, we read part one. We did it like a couple weeks ago. We did a review of that. And it was like the setup of possibly a new symbiote, a new baby that Venom's going to have. So we're probably going to get some answers today in those comics. So I'm going to make two different videos. We're going to review each one. So uh, this one is going to go in front of Venomize. So enjoy this review. And then definitely come back for the next episode where we look at uh, the Nativity uh, Part 2, the finale of the current Venom run before it gets rebooted and restarted next month with Venom number 1 coming out in May from Marvel. So let's get right into it. Hey everyone, welcome back. And before we get started with Venomize 4 review, let's give away that digital code. So if you want, boom, there's the code. First person to put that code in gets the comic book. Just go to that website, put that code in, and you will get a free copy of Venomize number four. Um, and obviously if you miss the code, don't worry because it's only one, it only works one time. If you miss it, I have other codes we're going to give away in the very next episode. We're going to do Venom the Nativity. Uh, we're going to review that and I'll try to put that up tomorrow and you guys will see, you'll get a, another chance to get a code there. And then episode 150 is coming up in a few uh, episodes from now and we're going to give away pretty much all the remaining Marvel digital codes that I have in that one episode. I'm going to try to get to 30, but I don't know if I have enough to get to 30, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, but anyway, let's talk real briefly about Venomize number four. And the reason I'm going to do it briefly is because, in my opinion, this is the worst issue out of all uh, four issues that are out so far. The first one I thought was building up an in something interesting, and I was like, ooh, where is this going to go? Where's, what's going to happen? And the last two were just what I thought they would be, just action and what felt like filler a little bit. Uh, they had some moments that was setting up the story or continuing the story, but mostly it was just big action sequences drawn beautifully by a Bon Coella. And so I was like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm on this ship because of a Bon. I love his artwork and I think it fits the the kind of the funness of the story that they're trying to go for. Uh, even though there's really big stakes, they're treating it like a, you know, almost like a Transformer movie in a way where it's like, all right, there's big stakes, but everyone's kind of having fun doing what they are doing. And so, and I know that's a bad comparison. A lot of you are like, oh, you like the Transformers? Transformer movies, it's like, eh, I like the Transformers, and I do go see the movies, but they're kind of separate things sometimes. Um, but in either way, you know, with this, I was kind of hoping that now that it's issue four, we would sink into a little bit more plot, because we have to wrap this up in, next week in the final issue, episode five, or issue five of this, and I'm kind of like, all right, so we should get some things here to happen, and really nothing happens in this. And on top of all that, the one thing that kept me on board in this series was a Bond's artwork, and he doesn't even draw this issue. And I figured and was worried that something like this might happen because it's a weekly series and it's very hard to you know you know keep up with a weekly series but a bond started early or you know like most artists they start a couple months before the book comes out uh, drawing it but I was hoping he had enough leeway you know to, to get all five issues done but it doesn't look like the case and I hope he comes back for issue five but I'm I'm not sure either because he didn't even draw a page or two in this uh, this is full-on drawn by uh, Kevin Labranda and I will not bash Kevin's artwork uh, he this guy drew his heart out on this book and I think his style is still kind of light and fun kind of like a bond but it is not uh, not specifically to my liking it to me this reflects a lot of uh, artists that are at Marvel right now where when you do these wide shots the details are very you know, not there pretty much. And uh, the inkers and colorists are kind of filling in where there's lack of art. And on a close up, it's, you know, very cartoony looking, which is fine because again, it's keeping with the style of the series. Like, I think these two faces look great, uh, you know, there. But then when you pull like the wide shot like this, that looks like kind of phoned in a little bit. I won't say phoned in. I mean, I know it's not easy to draw comics and draw characters at certain angles, but some of the details lack in these panels. And it really brings me down. Like this Captain America shot right here doesn't really inspire uh, me to keep, want to keep reading even. And and again, I'm not trying to come down super hard on Kevin's art. Uh, this guy drew really, really well. But when you have a bond on it, it's it's hard to follow that up with for any artist because I was already in the mindset of him. He's what sold me on this book uh, because I liked his art 
Art and Venomverse so much. So without it, this book drops big time for me. I mean, we do get to see Thanos in it as the, you know, the poison. You do get confirmation that the there is a poison queen and it is, it's talking to, um, you know, Dr. Doom as his mother. So my theory and from issue one is true. It's his mother. Uh, and Thanos is seeing death. And then you have Jean Grey who's been possessed. She sees Professor Xavier. But then we also learn that Jean Grey is not fully uh, taken over by the poison. So it looks like, again, we have her out. She's going to live. Uh, but instead of coming up with creative and interesting ways to save some of these characters that I that I knew were going to be saved, I'm like, all right, obviously, you know, Jean's not going to be gone forever. They're going to keep her around uh, in the main X-Men book. Uh, so how do they get her back? She just is like she's just like it's like a Deadpool in the in the in the Venomverse miniseries. Only the, uh, Deadpool had the you know the power of being crazy, and that you know is why he got away uh, because the symbiote couldn't or the poison couldn't adapt to his craziness. Uh, so that's why a pocket of him was still able to be you know, conscience, uh, conscious when he was, uh, you know, fighting his heroes, he could turn on the poisons. Uh, but with, with Jean, I guess that's the same thing. She kept a part of her brain in the back of her mind with her power somehow or something. And so she's still talking to Scott and she's acting like a, a, a sleeper agent. And I'm like, well, we already did this in Venomverse. We already had this plot where one of the X-Men uh, decided to be a sleeper agent. And so now Jean is like, you know, revealed that she's kind of a sleeper agent and she's telling Scott everything she needs to know. Um, so it's kind of like, all right, whatever. It's, it's like, it's like, we've done that trope already in the last series. They're doing it again. Uh, and then this one also like, uh, agent anti-venom, the, obviously the poisons know he's a threat and they know he can burn and melt through them. And there is some, at least a scene where they address that in here where Flash Thompson's like, I think I murdered someone. Cause when I melted him, he turned into goo. There was no person left under there. And then Eddie was like, yeah, they're all dead and he's like yeah but do you know that for a fact like you're not like the smartest guy in the world do you know for a fact we can't save the people in these poisons and it's like well why would flash ask that question he melted someone to goo so that tells me that there was no one left in that uh that body um so but he's like but we you know then then flashes but i'm not the smartest guy either but we are in room a room with some of the smartest people in the world like alchemax and some you know like uh you know kid kaiju and stuff like we these kids are smart these people are smart and maybe they can come up with a way and venom's like no we don't have time we just got to attack them head on and let's try to kill the queen i like that plan let's just get he's being the blunt object and so again you know all those things that i kind of let go because the art kind of you know mesmerized me in the first couple issues has was completely gone and it made me realize just how much i was given this book a pass because of the artwork because i like the artwork so much so when i got this issue and i was like oh wow a bond's not drawing this i was kind of stunned i was like okay like this is this isn't good like uh so it, it, it was basically my my beer goggles were taken off <laughs> or something um you know it's like now i'm seeing things for where they were it's like uh, that 30 rock episode where uh john ham's living in the handsome bubble and he doesn't know how the world really works it's like now i'm reading and I'm like, oh, okay, now I see how things really work. Uh, so it, it kind of pulled me out of the story big time or what was in the story that kind of interested me and that I was kind of being a little forgiving on this issue kind of pulled me away. And although I thought there was a couple good character moments, ultimately, you know, when you get big splash pages like this and it's just, I don't know, the art doesn't really, didn't really sell me on this big splash page that should have been cooler. And you had like Jimmy Wolverine fighting Carnage and Carnage is now poison and he kind of looks a little silly, you know, drawn not by a bond to me at least. Um, I can start to see where you know, in this in this universe with the poison stuff that you need a specific person drawing these so these don't look as goofy as they do. And in this case, it's like, ah, no, that actually does look goofy. I just really like, a, I must really like a Bond's work that much to overlook some of the goofiness. So this was an eye-opener for me. I think I learned a lot about myself in this. So I'm not going to go back and obviously change my reviews of the first three issues. I really like them for what they are. But in two and three, also the reason I gave this a pass from a story standpoint was because I thought four would give us more story and it just hasn't. And so we have like at the end, Kid Kaiju shows up. He like saves uh, uh, Lunella and the, the uh, devil dinosaur and he teleports them away. And he's like, all right, I'm going to create some more monsters and we're going to go fight uh, the poisons at their home base. So the X-Men are in one uh, jet and the Avengers and other characters are in another jet and they're flying up and uh, they're mixed and matched. So there's some X-Men on this one and some Avengers on this one and they're heading to the mothership and they're leaving all the other poisons on earth because they're like look if we can just get to that mothership and destroy destroy the queen then all these people will revert uh, presumably uh and so they're heading up there even though they had all the smartest minds in the world they're going up and doing a plan that uh, is just brute force, I guess. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, they're going up there to do that. No creative ways uh, to uh, deal with anything. And Agent Anti Venom, they know he's a threat, and instead of like, you know, they know he can melt them, and the poisons still throw little white creatures to absorb him. 
and they just melt right off. And it's like, but they knew that was going to happen. So why did they risk throwing any more of those creatures at them? Uh, they need those creatures to convert the symbiotes, and like 20 of them just died just touching a Agent Antivenom. And then he was like, yeah, I guess those that didn't work. And then he takes his guns, and he's like, I didn't, I didn't want to kill friends of mine, but I'm definitely going to kill Thanos, because Thanos shows up, crashes through the Quinjet, sends all those heroes back down to Earth, and Venom and Spider-Man and some of the other people, they head off into space, go into the mothership, and all the other heroes are on Earth now in the wreckage in New York fighting Thanos, uh, who's now a poison. And then when Kid Kaiju shows up with all these like monsters, uh, you know, he's like, oh good, my queen's going to be happy, because Thanos' mission was to come and retrieve Kid Kaiju. So I don't know if they have enough time in the next issue for him to capture Kid Kaiju and also, you know, like, uh, you know, do that whole plot where he captures him and then the heroes have to save him. I think it's pretty much just going to be a big action sequence. Everyone's going to fight Thanos and then maybe even kill Thanos because Anti-Venom technically can, even though Thanos is a super powerful creature that no one, everyone has a tough time killing. Now that he's a poison, he could essentially die in like one touch from Anti-Venom, which is why I don't know why he jumped at Anti-Venom or Agent Antivenom jumped at Thanos with guns and was shooting him with guns. I'm like, why are you doing that? Just go up and give him a big, sweet bear hug and kiss him on the cheek and you'll kill him. Uh, so, yeah, just a lot of things like that in this issue that I was like, oh, man, I I, I don't know if I can... I, if the next issue is not drawn by Yaban, I'm going to be really upset. And the fact that when this comes out in trade, I'm going to have this chapter, at least one chapter, if not two, in the trade that doesn't have a Bond's artwork in it, it's going to bum me out because that was my favorite thing about buying the trade of, of Venomverse was that every page was just like art that I really liked. Um, and I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it really, I, I liked it. I like his art a lot. Uh, and so I can't wait to see what book he draws next. Abon, wherever you go next, I'm definitely going to follow uh, your artwork and definitely hope you stay in the Marvel Universe and draw some cool stuff there. But if you go to DC too, um, I'll follow you over there as well. Uh, but here with this, you know, again, I don't want to crap on uh, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Labranda because I think his art ultimately is fine. It's just hard to follow up what I liked in Abon. Um, and then Cullen Bunn, this script, it, to me, it was it was weak. This is the part where you should start, you know, hooking and bringing it all home and everything like that. And and really, it just, it, I feel like the next issue is, I don't know how it's going to deliver because I feel like the next issue is just going to be more action and everyone running on this suicide mission and nothing, you know, no story beats are going to come out of it and no characters are going to left be left changed or affected. And I thought there was a glimmers of some of that in this issue, but probably the least out of all the issues uh, in this. And everything just kind of conveniently happens and falls into place and it, it feels a little it feels a little lazy to me if, if I could be honest so anyway um yeah I I don't know but if you guys out there if you read it and you have a different opinion let me know what I was really surprised this week was that this was the book that I was excited for and I didn't really like that much and this is the book that I wasn't really excited for and I ended up loving very much so we're going to talk about this in the next episode this is the nativity part two the final issue of the current venom run so thank you guys for watching let me know what you think of this episode down in the comments below I'll see you in the future. Peace.